Hey everybody, I'm Sasha White. And I'm MK Fane. And this is a bonus episode of Identity Crisis. We are coming to you today because of this executive order by our new president, Joe Biden. So, you know, MK, before we were recording, you told me that over at Wolf, you guys who are really following this stuff and honestly, some of the only people in the country so far fighting back against it, um, you told me that this is even worse than you expected. So first of all, just explain for people what the executive order said. Yeah, so the executive order, which was one of, I think about 15 or 17 that were signed on Joe Biden's first day as president, is an order that basically says that he wants to apply a Supreme Court decision called Bostock to every federal regulation, including both Title VII of the Civil Rights Act and Title IX of the Civil Rights Act. He has instructed federal agencies to, uh, number one, immediately start implementing this decision as uh, a workplace. So in all federal workplaces now, this immediately takes effect. And he has also instructed every federal agency to spend the next 100 days coming up with implementations of these policies, which essentially is saying that any place where sex discrimination is included in law, for example, in Title VII of the Civil Rights Act, which deals with workplace discrimination, and Title IX of the Civil Rights Act, which deals with discrimination discrimination and education on the basis of sex, that sex discrimination must be interpreted as meaning also discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation and what this executive order calls gender identity without defining. Right. So it sounds great. It sounds so nice. <laughs> Lovey-dovey. We're all going to be equal. You're, no matter your sexual orientation, right? Like that's something that I'm always on board with equality for your sexual orientation but then there's this gender identity thing so what does that actually do when they're saying because it says in the executive order that all people must have equal rights based on their gender identity what does that do for women's rights and women's protection in law yeah so if what this actually did was to say that if you identify as transgender, you can't be fired because of that, or you can't be denied housing because of that, or denied education because of that, then this is not something that feminists would have a problem with. We have long advocated that people who are gender non-conforming in any way, regardless of how they call themselves, should have fair and equal treatment under the law. And there's a lot of case law that does previously lay out that gender non-conformity, um, which is called in law, uh, non-adherence to sex stereotype roles is protected as part of protecting discrimination on the basis of sex. But instead, what this law is actually going to do is it means that in any case where, a, where sex is a thing that you are making any sort of differential on, that you cannot define a male who identifies as a female as different from a female. And this is how this uh, Bostock Supreme Court case has been interpreted time and time again by the lower courts, which is very unfortunate because it didn't need to be interpreted that way. But we have seen over and over again that this is how it's interpreted. And this is clearly how uh, President Biden has intended for it to be interpreted through this executive order. So is it correct that, um, you know, tell me if this is the, the correct interpretation. Under this ruling, under this order rather, um, trans women, AKA males who identify as women or as transgender um, are considered women who are trans. In other words, they're not considered separate from the protected class of females. They are considered part of that class. Is that right? Yeah, that's pretty much the gist and um, how it will play out. So for example, uh, there, the federal agency, the Department of Housing and Urban Development funds shelters across the country. These are emergency shelters that deal with things like homelessness and domestic violence. So if a shelter is set up to serve women, then a shelter cannot deny access 
to a man who identifies as a woman because that will be considered discrimination on the basis of gender identity. And it's the same with, for example, the interpretation of Title IX and sports is now a school that receives federal funding if they implement the regulations that this executive order is instructing them to will not be able to keep a boy out of athletics for girls because that will be considered discrimination on the basis of gender identity. So, I mean, this applies to pretty much, I mean, the federal agencies control everything from, like I mentioned, shelters and sports, but also things like prisons. Also, just like, there's such a huge reach of our federal government in the United States that people don't realize. For example, there are thousands, thousands of women who work for the federal government or are federal contractors. Every single one of these women now just lost sex segregated bathrooms, gyms in their buildings, like locker rooms, all of it. Uh, they're also compelling speech, which is really concerning, it should be to any group concerned about civil liberties, because it will be considered uh, hateful it, to call a man who identifies as a woman he or to say that he is a man in these workplace environments, anything that's a federal workplace or a federal contracting workplace. So any employee now of the federal government has compelled speech. This should be considered a threat to the First Amendment. We also have serious problems with the freedom of religion because now we know that women who work in these environments are going to be expected to be in single sex spaces with men now. And this is a major threat to women who have religious beliefs that require modesty to certain degrees. They are now essentially excluded from that workforce, from the federal workforce. And unfortunately, it seems like by applying this so broadly to Title VII, it's actually going to be applied to all private employers as well in the long term. Now, yeah. what would be the criteria for a male to be considered part of the female sex class? Do they have to get surgery? Do they have to have a birth certificate change? What's the criteria? There is none. There's no criteria. All they need to do is say that they have this gender identity. It is essentially self-ID as it's been commonly called in the UK, um, but it's actually not even defined anywhere. It's not said anywhere that they have to define themselves this way. There is absolutely no criteria. There's absolutely no bar that needs to be crossed. Any man can now enter any women's space in these federal workplaces and agencies once they implement these rules with simply a word out of his mouth. What can be done and what is being done to address this? Yeah, so at Wolf, we have a petition up on our website where you can fill out a form and actually send a letter directly to President Biden and Vice, Kamala, Vice President Kamala Harris. And these letters, we have templates that include some details so you don't need to like come up with anything clever to say. If you want to, you can include your own comments. These letters are all being sent to the White House Correspondence Office. I know a lot of people think that people don't read these letters. They do. There is some poor intern whose job it is to sort through all of these emails. And your email won't be directly sent to President Biden, but what might happen is if there's a mass number of emails or letters that come in on a single topic in a short period of time, then there are staffers whose job it is to find what keywords keep coming up over and over and over again in correspondences to representatives and to highlight that to the higher up staff. So essentially in a, their next staff meeting, say on like Monday or Tuesday, then in the briefing, there might be a note there that says, feminists are really mad about this executive order. And by, can, by massively just getting a ton of people to write in, then we stand a chance at actually bringing this to President Biden's attention. But even if we don't, we are now seeing a massive groundswell of awareness on this issue. I mean, we have already gotten, I mean, the petition that we have has been up for only a few hours and we've already gotten about 700 people who have written letters. And I mean, that it's just a massive number of people who are responding very quickly. I think we're seeing people being peak transed all over the place right now in the United States. And I think that there might be some lawsuits coming. Can't say for sure, but, I, I anticipate that there might be. Well, be on the lookout, everyone. And MK, thank you for explaining this because it's complicated, but it is deeply sinister for women's rights. 
It really is. Yeah. Is there anything final that you want us to know that people should know about the executive order? Uh, yes, actually. There's 100 days that these federal agencies have to implement these rules. What this means is that each individual agency is going to be going in the next 100 days through their own totally unique rule development and implementation process. At every single one of those agencies, we have a chance to influence that policy. These federal agencies are required to take public feedback for a certain period of time on new regulations that they're going to implement. So over those next 100 days, you will be seeing from Wolf a new call to action for every single different federal agency that can impact women's rights. So this is not a one-time thing. We are going to be fighting this fight for the next hundred days. And we need as many people as we can to join us on as many of those actions as possible because we, we don't need to feel helpless. There is still time to, to raise awareness about what is happening here and to stop some of the worst impacts of this policy. So please, I do not want my American sisters to feel hopeless right now. I want you to feel inspired to action because there are still a lot of actions to come. Excellent. Thank you, MK. Thanks, Sasha.